Hello and welcome to NJ Biz Conversations. I'm your host, Jeff Kanage. My guest today is Max Gomez. He is the founder and owner of Amped Fitness in Brielle. Max, welcome. Awesome. Thank you for having me, Jeff. I'm excited to be here. Oh, well, thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Um, you, uh, you, you started uh, Amped Fitness, it, it, which is a gym, it, fitness center, um, in January of 2021, if I'm if I remember correctly. Yeah. Which, at a time when um, you know people were still worried about the about the COVID-19 pandemic, and that's interesting in and of itself. But I wanted to start with where your story starts, and that's on a motocross bike. Um, I know you've told the story probably uh, millions of times, but I'm going to ask you one more time to let our viewers know what happened to you and uh, and how that led you to to own a gym in Brielle. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like you said, I've gotten it down pretty good. So I can give you a nice, concise story here. But um, basically, I've raced dirt bikes my whole life. Um, I, I received my first one from my parents as a gift at the age of four. I really shouldn't say parents should say my dad my mom was never really much of a fan of the whole dirt bike thing but um from that age you know it was just kind of something for me and him to do together you know go to the park stuff like that and then as I grew older and got bigger the bikes would get bigger and then you had to ride at you know sanctioned events with a closed course and all that so um you know and it's not a sport like basketball where there's you know a court and every other, you know, block, uh, right. this was, you had to travel. Um, so, you know, that kind of just took us down the East coast. Um, and, you know, for the first big, you know, portion of my life, that was primarily what I did. Um, so when I was, uh, I was 17 at the time. Well, so I was transitioning 17 to 18. I had, uh, dr I wanted to, um, participate in this national event. And one of the qualifiers was out in Pennsylvania. Um, and this was May of 2012. So I had just turned 18, actually. Um, and, you know, we had hopes of going there, qualifying. And then the big national was in Tennessee, which was would be later in the summer. Um, so we went there with high hopes. And then, uh, you know, obviously some unfortunate things happened. Um, we had, you know, what turned originally what we thought was going to just be a, a broken foot or a sprained ankle ended up being something that changed my whole life. Um, you know, to go in a little more detail on that, it was, it ended up being, um, you know, compartment syndrome. And then I uh, developed gangrene and this was all within uh, in the hospital within a month. So I was in there for quite a while. Um, I had five different surgeries um, they tried to do a couple different things like a, um, a bypass from my left leg to my right leg um, to try to, you know, get some blood flow down there um, and things just weren't working. So ultimately, after about three weeks, we had to uh, make the tough decision um, to decide to amputate or not. Uh, but at that point, like I said, the gangrene kind of had set in. So it became almost, you know, a no brainer at that point. Um, and I was, it was June of, so by the time I had gotten out, it was summer was starting. It was about June. Um, and then it was kind of just like, you know, figure it out as you go, you know, you do therapy and this and that. Um, but those kind of came along the way. It was a, a long journey. Um, and, you know, through that whole period of time, I, uh, you know, ever since I was young, I was always into fitness, the sports that I like to do. So, you know, motocross. And then I also like to wrestle. Um, those required an intense, you know, you had to be training off the bike and, right. uh, you know, off the mat quite a bit. Um, so I always had this love for being in, you know, in good shape and, and um, all that kind of stuff. And when I was younger, I'd always dreamed of owning a gym one day. Um, you know, I didn't ever, I, I didn't know, you know, the difference between like, a big box gym or like a boutique gym. So I just kind of knew I wanted to own a gym. I wanted a room with weights that I could throw around and do my thing. Um, and, you know, it kind of led me, um, you know, I was lucky enough that it, that the things that happened kind of led me in this direction. Um, but I've always had that dream. And then, you know, after the accident, it was just kind of rebuilding myself. And in that process, it was, okay, well, I went back to the gym. Obviously I was, 
you know, pretty weak from being in the hospital for so sure. long, but, um, you know, I looked at it as just another challenge and, and learning how to use my new prosthetic once I received that, um, to do, you know, different exercises, squats and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, through that whole time, um, when I was in school, cause I had went back to college, I ha- I'd wanted to be a physical therapist. That was kind of what I wanted to do for, you know, all the way up until like a couple of years ago, really. Um, and so while I was in school for that, I worked at a gym in Freehold, um, called sets and, um, they were awesome. And then while I was doing that, the, um, unfortunately the pandemic hit, you know, and a lot of shut down a lot of gyms and businesses. I mean, looking back on it, it was a very unfortunate thing, but I got very lucky in the sense because it kind of evened the playing field a little bit for me. And it gave me an opportunity to kind of spread my wings a little. So within that time, um, you know, once everything shut down, I I went on Facebook and I just joined a bunch of moms of wall. And I live in Belmar. So I joined all these mom groups of local towns and I threw an ad out there. I didn't even really know what I was doing, but I was just like, let me just, you know, try to make some money. Cause I was, you know, we, everything was closed. No, there was no income coming in. So, um, threw an out an ad out in these Facebook groups and it, you know, caught fire. And I ended up going from one house to the next and each house had, you know, four or five, mostly moms there. Um, and then, you know, just networking and building a connection with these people. And then I did that all of summer 2020. And then uh, once, you know, everything was outside. So once it started to get too cold to do that, um, it was, you know, I started to kind of lose people. The, the temperature was dropping. Um, and that's when, again, I got very lucky. Um, I had ran into an old friend of mine who I used to work with. And I was kind of telling him what I, what I had going on. And I was doing these outdoor workouts, this and that. And he's like, oh, you know, my, my dad has a space in this building that he owns, um, you know, a small little room, but maybe he'd be willing to rent it to you. I was like, ah, okay. You know, didn't really think anything of it, but my, my dad was like, just go check it out. You got nothing to lose. So I went over there. I looked at it. It was a tiny little room. It had a blue rug. Um, I was like, all right, well, if we, you know, we're going to do this, we got to, you know, dive in and make it, make it good, make it work. Uh, so I knew we had some work, our work cut out for us, but, um, my dad and my, my grandpa, um, helped me kind of build out this tiny little room. And that was December of 2020. We spent about a month just fixing things and organizing. And then January, 2021, we opened the, the first location there. Um, and then, you know, just kind of wrote it out through the year. Um, we had a great first year. There was a lot of growth. Uh, looking back on it now, I don't know how I convinced these people to come to this ugly little room um, that we had set up, but it served its purpose. Um, and then, you know, once I felt it was time, we opened our second bigger location, which is much, much nicer. We painted it and we put, you know, decorated it, and new equipment and all that. Um, and that was April of 2022. Okay. Um, and that's in, that's our Brielle location. Brielle. So that's kind of where we were able to really establish ourselves and make a, you know, a name for ourselves within the community. And that's kind of where, you know, we're there now and continuing to grow, hoping for a very strong 2023. Um, we got some cool stuff planned ahead, so I'm excited for it. Okay. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about, about that, but first, um, I, I, just to, to go back a little bit, my understanding sure. is you, when, when you were working for the other gym, they uh, wanted you to go run one of their, one of their outlets. Am I wrote did, did I read that? Am I getting that right? Yes. So, yes. so you, you, I mean, they, I, they obviously recognize that you had um, an aptitude for, for, for running a business and, and for managing something like that. So this, this didn't come out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, I just think, um, like I said, it, uh, being a trainer is like my favorite thing in the world. Um, running a business, two totally separate things. And, right. you know, I'm, I'm learning that, you know, you kind of think, oh, I'll open my gym. And if you build it, they will come like, no, that is not the case. You have to learn how to brand and market and sell. And there's so many more um, things that are more important in the business than just being a good trainer. Obviously, you have to deliver a good product, but... Right. Um, you know, you want to, you can, 
be the greatest trainer in the world. If nobody knows you exist, you're going to be, you know, broke. So, right. um, but I think that, um, you know, to, to your point, so they were, uh, had, they had plans of opening a location. So I worked in Freehold and they, right. and I traveled from Belmar to Freehold. Um, so, you know, having a 5 a.m. class was tough to get there. You yep. know, it was a half hour drive. I was up at 3 a.m. and that was kind of difficult. So, and he had plans of opening another location um, somewhere near Belmar. And then I would kind of manage that as a salary position, which was growth in the company. And sure. that's something that I was super excited about. And then right at that time was when COVID hit. So it was kind of like took the wind out of, out of everybody's sails. Right. Um, but obviously, you know, he had to kind of, he wasn't going to open a gym if he couldn't even keep his, you know, the ones he had going. Right. So, right. Um, but I think he just saw more of like a drive in me. I always had that. I would always tell him um, all the time. Um, and his name was Anthony. Um, I would go, you know, Aunt, like I want to, I want to work. Like, I'm just hungry. I want to, I want to grow. I want to get better at what I do. Like, I want to invest my money into this. Like I, this is my dream, my goals. Like I have lofty goals, but I'm willing to work, you know, as hard as, as can be to get there. So I think, you know, the skills aspect of it, I definitely lacked, but the drive and determination to get to that point was, you know, there was no shortage of that. Okay. Now uh, you you did say you 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 don't know how you managed to convince people <laughs> to come to to a small room. I mean that that again January 2021 the vaccines were just starting to come out. Um, it was not a good time to try to to try to convince people to come into gyms. Right. I mean there were a lot you know famously they were very very hard. A lot of them were were hit, hit very hard during the pandemic because yeah. they were closed down and it was just not the place that anybody wanted to be. Uh, how did you manage to convince people? Was it just that network that you had built up? Um, in, in going to, to folks' houses and, and them getting to know you? I mean, was that the core of your original um, client base? Yeah, yeah. So um, I think it was a combination of a couple different things. Okay. Um, be, being that, you know, they had trusted me up to that point, you know, I had long, I'd known a lot of these people for, um, you know, six, seven months, and they were training with me consistently every week. So we had built up a little bit of a relationship at that point. Um, you know, when I went into the new space, I knew that, you know, we kind of gridded things out. So people were spaced out. We followed all the precautions. Right. Obviously, it was, you know, one of those things. The, the room was very tiny. So that was, you know, one of the downsides to it. Um, but I was like, OK, if we can kind of space things out, everybody's six feet. Um, you know, I, I, in the beginning, the I just had enough people basically to cover the rent. Right. Okay. So it was kind of, it, I wasn't in a position where I was making any money, but I was like, okay, well, at least if I can just kind of keep it where it is and I'm making just enough to keep the bills paid, um, then, you know, we'll run it. And everything was um, the rent there was month to month, which was awesome because I didn't sign any lease. Sure. So I knew if things didn't, you know, end up working out in four or five months, I could just be like, okay, I'm taking all this stuff out. I'll sell it and, and we'll figure it out from there. So, um, and then I think just, like I said, those relationships that I had built with them, it took a little bit of convincing, but I was able to kind of get them into that first space. Um, and then, you know, uh, initially five members became seven, seven became 10, 10 became 20 and just little by little, I mean, looking back now, you, you, you know, I go in that room and I'm like, wow, I have no idea how we made this happen. Um, but it, it, like I said, it served its purpose and, uh, and we ran it till it was like busting at the seams. Right. Okay. So you, you obviously did, um, get enough, uh, build up enough, uh, client base so that you were able to move into, into a larger space. So b beyond your personal story, what is it about AMP that sets it apart? Um, from from other gyms, I mean, what what's your approach? How is it different from some of the other places that that folks might be familiar with? Whether they're chains or independents, I mean, I uh, you I'll let you draw the you know more about it than I do, so I'm, uh, I'll let you draw the distinction. Sure, sure. So so I think you know, looking back on it now, uh, January of this upcoming January will be two years that the gym is in right. business. Um, I would say, you know, if you ask me, what's like the one of the toughest parts about uh, you know, even just running a business is, I think, like you said, what makes you different? And, you know, 
every gym's got the weights and ca- you know cable machines and squat racks. Like there's nothing special about what we have in our gym. You know, right. it's it's all the the same equipment. Um, I think being that I'm an amputee and, you know, I'm very vocal and open about that. And like the gym is named Amped, which is kind of a play on words, um, I think is kind of what grabs people's attention and kind of draws them in. Um, So, you know, they see that and they see this kid and, uh, oh, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, I like to think nothing really is holding me back. And, and I kind of vocalize that and I try to, um, you know, put that on on my members and people that enter my gym so I think that kind of helps draw people in Um, and then I think just being able to provide a great product and a great service and I have excellent coaching staff um, and we're very passionate about what we do Um, the community is awesome in our gym it's like as soon as you step in whether you've been there a month or a week or a day like you're just family and and I think those things are kind of what keeps people in so I think the combination and, and learning who we are in the community and who Amped is as a brand um, has been an, an ex, uh, it's definitely been a journey, but it's been an exciting journey mm-hmm. and kind of, you know, spreading our feet and getting our feet planted in the community has been something that I've, you know, love to see happen right before my eyes. Right. You know, I, I, it's, I, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that I'm, I remember reading that, um, uh, the example that you set for for the folks who come into your gym, you know, the adversity that that you've gone through, <laughs> when when to, for folks to look at that and think, okay, can I can I do this this next set? Can I do this, these these next reps? They look at you and they say, okay, yes, I, if he can do that, I can do this. That must be a um, a, a good uh, for <laughs> to put it coarsely, a good selling point. Yeah, um, I, like I, I always say, I'm like I don't live to inspire other people. I just live like this, you know, unfortunately, looking back, this happened to me, and it was something that I couldn't control. And this is how it was meant to be. But, you know, looking back on it, I wouldn't have changed any of it. This is what I was meant to do. This is how I was meant to be. And, you know, I never I always said, I'm not going to allow this to ever stop me. I mean, I was able to get back on my dirt bike, which Um, you know, I don't ride much anymore, but that was one of the things that I wanted to do. And I didn't want anything to ever say that it beat me. Um, and I think it's the same thing, whether it's, you know, losing a a limb or weight loss, or you want to gain muscle or whatever, nothing is easy in life. Things that are worth having always take time. They take effort. Um, it took me years to get as comfortable with my body and movement as I am now. Um, but I think that's just, it's not impossible. And I think if I could do it, anybody can do it. Um, It's just a matter of, okay, well, can I instill that in somebody else and inspire them to make the change that they need? Okay. Um, Now it it looks like, I mean, just, just listening to you talk and and looking at, at, at your website and some of the, some of the other materials that that have been written about you, that you're fairly hands-on, you still are in the gym working with, with clients or you still have time to do that? Yeah. Yeah. That's so, um, Another difficult part about business is learning how to, you know, the gym is my baby and I want to be able to, you know, you want to be there all the time, but it's very easy to work in it and not on it. So I'm trying to kind of learn my ways and um, not that I ever want to stop coaching. I love doing that. I wish I could do that like just that. Um, But you know, in order to grow, um, I can't be everywhere at once. And I need to figure out how to put the right people in the right places to allow us to continue to grow. Um, as of right now, I do coach quite a bit. Um, I'm there Monday, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings and Tuesday, Thursday nights. So I am still there doing, you know, a pretty hefty schedule. Um, and then I do a lot of you know, PTs on and off here and there, which are just, you know, one-on-one sessions. Um, But it's one of those things that each year I'm trying to not work less, just kind of change my role a little bit in the, in the company. So, um, you know, it's a learning process for sure. Yeah. So is, is that the biggest challenge that balance or is it hiring? Is it the cost of, uh, of, of doing business? Um, What's, what's, what, what keeps you up at night? What's, what's the thing you worry about most? Um, so that's a great question. There's a lot of different things. Um, I I like to think that, 
I work hard enough that I sleep through the nights, most okay. nights fairly easily. Well, it sounds um, like it. I would think a gym owner would probably <laughs> be pretty yeah. tuckered out by the time yeah. the night's going, the, the lights go out. Exactly. By the time my head hits the pillow, I'm like, I, I'm lights out within like five minutes. Um, and, and we're up early. You know, I got to be up most days at four o'clock because I have a 5 a.m. Those Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So, um, but it's, there's nothing really that I can say that's like, you know, this, I wish this was different. You know, you kind of learn to enjoy the struggles, you know, you, you'll, people come and go, you know, you think you, you got somebody, a member that you locked in for life and maybe they go and try a different gym. And rather than taking it personal, it's, you know, things change, you know, people right. drive one model of car for 10 years and then they go, you know what, I'm going to try this, you know, or this make, this model, whatever. Um, and things just change and it's learning how to um, just kind of go with the flow. And um, I always try to try my hardest and put the most effort into things that I care about um, and just be a good person to people and try to, you know, ultimately my passion is just to be able to change people's lives and help them. Um, and it's gotten me this far so far. So um I just want to continue that and, and hopefully we can really, really, you know, make some great growth. Okay. Well, that's, that was the, that was the last thing I was going to ask you about. You've been very generous with your time, but I'm, I'm curious as to what your plans are for the future. What's your, what's your goals for next year, for example, and then beyond that, is this something that, that you see yourself doing for the long term, um, expanding the number of locations you have? What, how do you see the, the future developing for Amp Fitness? Yeah, so so I would love, um, you know, once we kind of got into that Brio location and, and, and at that uh, location, you know, I had signed a lease, like everything was a little more official. I was like, okay, well, I'm here at least for the next, you know, three years that my lease is here. So okay. this is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking things kind of year by year. But when I look, you know, at the end of the tunnel, I'm like, I would love to have three or four, five different locations um, all within, you know, within this area, um, we're, we're playing around with, I, I don't think I want anything bigger than what we have right now. Okay. Um, I think we have a good number, uh, for the class size and the location size, stuff like that, the equipment, I think we're kind of in a good spot with that. Um, we, we were thinking maybe of even a potential, another location be, uh, maybe even a little bit smaller. So you get a little bit more, um, you know, attention, a, a six person class, as opposed to a 12 person class oh. where it's a little more, maybe high, you know, high ticket, but um, you're getting, you know, a nutrition component. There's, you know, certain people where they might want to start in the bigger class. They kind of, you know, get their feet wet and get rolling. And then we say, okay, well, look, we have this other location that's, you know, a town over that is a little bit, you know, more money, but you're going to get a, a, a higher quality uh, workout. So we're kind of playing around with a couple different things. I do want to grow. I don't want to just, you know, stay in my sure. Brielle spot. Um, so we're, you know, we're kind of just taking it, taking it year by year as we go. Okay. Well, I, I hope you'll you'll keep us posted and, and check in with us and let us know how it goes. I'd I'd, I'd really if if, if you do um, open another location or, or something happens, I'd love to talk to you again about this. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you again, Jeff. I really appreciate this. All right. Thank you, Max Gomez, founder and owner of Amped Fitness in Brielle. Thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate of you course. taking the time. And thank you all for watching. Until next time, stay safe, everyone.